Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Campus 31 Television. I'm Rich Peterson, your no-quarter sports reporter. We have another Pirate football game to recap for you all today. This past weekend, the East Carolina Pirates defeated the Marshall Thundering Herd. Dowdy Ficklin had another packed house for this one, and it wasn't mostly currently enrolled students like it normally seems to be. It was homecoming for ECU, and thousands of alumni showed up for this Conference USA matchup. Coach Ruffin was especially happy about it being homecoming, and you could tell as he walked out onto the field that it was going to be a great day. It was a fairly even game in the first half, but soon after it turned into a rout. ECU didn't allow Marshall to score at all in the second half, and they ended up winning 37-10. Winning the game allowed the Pirates to continue the success that they've had most of the season. It also allowed them to keep their undefeated conference record. Overall, they're 5-2 now, and will be taking on UCF next weekend in Orlando. Marshall won the coin toss and elected to receive the ball first. Their offense started with some trouble, and ECU's blitz-minded defense was getting a lot of pressure on quarterback Brian Anderson, but they couldn't seem to get to him. After a run play that got nowhere, they punted to ECU, and the Pirates were looking good at first until they had to punt the ball back to Marshall. The overwhelming crowd seemed to be getting to the Herd's offense, and the stadium was as loud as ever. A pass was nearly intercepted, and they punted back to ECU. It was on this drive that the first points were scored. A five-yard passing touchdown to Lance Lewis put the score at 7-0. Marshall's offense was determined to put up some points of their own. On a third down play, a pass interference call was made on ECU's defense, giving the Herd an automatic first down. A couple more pass plays later, a failed third down attempt led Marshall to kicking the field goal, making it 7-3. Next to ECU drive, a pass from Dominique Davis was picked off by Donald Brown near the sidelines. It was definitely a questionable catch, and the refs reviewed it. They ruled it as an interception, and ECU fans were furious. Marshall's offense began driving down the field. The herd was gaining yards and momentum through the air, and also by penalties on ECU. A roughing the passer call against East Carolina pushed them closer to the end zone, but Brian Anderson was unable to keep the momentum on the herd's side when he threw a pick that was returned 40 yards to the midfield by Bradley Jacobs. This led the Pirate offense to move down the field and kick a field goal that made the score 10-3. ECU kicked to Marshall, and their offense took the field once again. Brian Anderson had plenty of time in the pocket on a few of these plays, especially in this replay where you can see that he had great protection but couldn't connect with his receiver. He eventually hooked up with Troy Evans in the end zone, making it all tied up at 10-10. Although the herd was able to even the score out, a couple of possession changes led to their offense having some trouble again. Another pass from Anderson was intercepted, this time by Derek Blacknall. A couple of plays into ECU's drive, Jonathan Williams found some room, and he hurried 29 yards into the end zone, making the score 17 to 10. ECU kicked to Marshall again, and some more trouble on their offense led them to punt. Unfortunately, a flag was thrown on this play, and a roughing the kicker call was made. ECU fans weren't content with the ref's call, but luckily a pass from Anderson bounced off a helmet and was picked off by Michael Brooks. ECU drove the field and settled for a field goal with a few seconds remaining before the half. The score was 20 to 10 at halftime and the fans were ready for the second half to begin. The Pirates began showing their dominance in the second half immediately. ECU's offense wasted no time in less than two minutes into the third quarter. Dominique Davis ran 26 yards into the end zone. After Marshall was unable to score again, another field goal by ECU's Mike Barber made it 30 to 10. The Pirates kicked off to the herd and their offense got on the field hoping for some improvement. On this drive, Marshall began to show some sign of life, but they turned the ball over on downs near the end zone. ECU's offense was eager to score again, even though the game was out of reach for Marshall. Jonathan Williams helped them gain some breathing room from being backed up on their own end zone. His powerful run was followed by some pass completions, and then unfortunately for ECU, Dominique Davis was sacked twice in a row. On this drive, the fourth quarter began and the traditional no-quarter flag was raised. The moon eventually rose high above the stands and it began to get a little cold, but for a lot of fans, including myself, we toughed it out and stayed till the end. A pass completion by Dominique Davis and another Jonathan Williams run led to a touchdown reception by Mike Price, making it 37-10. A couple of possession changes later, and both teams' second string quarterbacks getting some playing time, the game came to an end with the final score being ECU 37, Marshall 10. Coach Ruff looked very satisfied after the game. After all, this was his homecoming too. He stated that it was great to play at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium Saturday. 
There was another sold out crowd and over the past two weeks, ECU has had the two largest crowds in their history, totaling over 100,000 fans. Coach Ruff also stated, what a blessing that is to be able to come home to that venue. And he's absolutely right. Thousands of alumni returned to their alma mater on Saturday, and it was a huge blessing to the fans, the team, the university, the community, and especially the alumni themselves.